Okay, let us discuss this problem. This is related to the moving coil galvanometer. So, moving coil galvanometer is a device that can measure the amount of current. So, we have a, so let us discuss first how this galvanometer works. So, we are discussing the principle of moving coil galvanometer. So, this is about moving coil galvanometer. So what we have, so let us say this is the, this diagram if you see, this is the top view, or this is the internal mechanism of moving coil galvanometer and this is the side view, you have a side view this side, so this is the side view, so this is the side view we have. So if you see from the front it will look something like this and this is the internal mechanism how moving coil galvanometer works so this is an internal mechanism so this part is more important because i have to know how the moving coil galvanometer works so if you see uh, this contains to a magnet this is a this magnet one part of the magnet this side and this side another part of the magnet so one is north another is south so let us say this is north and then this is south so this is two magnet and these two magnet are basically it's a semicircular kind of magnet so this magnets are generally called horse magnets and these magnets two horse magnet these are called these magnets are used to produce radial magnetic field so you see the magnet if you see this diagram so this is the magnet you have here so this is the north magnet north pole this side you have south pole and the magnetic field lines is something like this so radial magnetic field lines are getting or not so here also you have the radial magnetic field lines magnetic fields are any form so important point so magnetic fields are radial so radial magnetic field lines so we have radial magnetic field lines that is important are getting or not and this is any form also it is a any form magnetic field so this is also important so this is again any form now if you see how this works so when you have if you connect this and this contains a loop this is a iron core so this is made of iron core so if you see here this is the same thing is here so this is the iron core this is a cylindrical kind of thing and this contains wire loop so these are the wire loop so this loop this loop so these are made of a wire so it's a uh, binding of any kind of wire you can have iron or you can have copper that can basically conduct the current and now the lower end of this rod, this is a pipe motor, this iron core is fixed in a rod and this lower end of the rod is connected to a spring. So this is a torsional spring. Again on the upper also it connected to a spring. So this means if you try to rotate this iron core, this cylinder kind of thing. So if you try to rotate this, this side, uh, this will try to approach. So these two uh, springs will try to approach and that's why these uh, springs are called torsional spring. Now if you connect this galvanometer with a current, so there is a current that flows through this loop and if there is a current then there is a torque. So torque wants to move this thing but this a spring tries to oppose the movement. Are you getting on? There is a basically pointer. So this is the pointer you have. So a time comes, so if you have a, if you apply a current I, current I apply a torque and if the current I is very high, torque is high and correspondingly this pointer moves. So if you see this diagram, so this pointer moves in this direction. So if you apply a current, this pointer moves in this direction because of the torque. And now this comes into equilibrium somewhere where you have a, because this torque is also applied by the spring. So restoring torque is applied by a spring. And this torque is proportional to angle theta. So after some theta, what happens? After some theta, after some rotation, so this rotated by theta angle, after that point, what you will have? You will have the K theta, that is the spring restoring force is equals to torque applied by the current so at equilibrium what you have so this is the only important point we have so we have at equilibrium so if you see at equilibrium you have torque 
by the current so this is torque by current is equals to the restoring torque by the a spring so this is restoring torque uh, restoring by the spring now if you remember a torque on a loop by the current is given by us given as mu cross b so torque is given by mu cross b so torque on a loop is given by mu cross b let us say we have n number of terms so mu is n i a so n i a cross b so this is the torque by the current now another important point whenever you have equilibrium your magnetic field lines is this so this is magnetic field lines and this is your loop so at equilibrium so when this this torque both torques are equal magnetic field lines are always parallel to the loop this means current in the loop and magnetic field lines always makes 90 degree angle this is one important point you see magnetic field lines are radial so this is the magnetic field lines this is the radial magnetic field lines we have are getting and the direction of loop is again here so you see here so this is the loop so you can see here so this is the direction of loop this means area vector is perpendicular so area vector and v are perpendicular when this comes to the rest so at the point of equilibrium i can say a and b are perpendicular so a is perpendicular to b at equilibrium so this is another important point so at equilibrium we will have these two things are perpendicular so a cross b can be simply written as a into b because sin 90 is 1 so this is n i a b now torque due to a spring is basically proportional to theta so i can write k into theta where k is torsional constant of a spring so this is torsional constant of a spring So now you see a spring is not simply linear spring if you have a linear spring that try to restore or that try to resist the expansion or elongation or uh, compression but this a spring that is a torsional spring try to resist the rotation and that's why there is a constant k you have constant k so if you know the k basically you can calculate theta are you getting or not or if you know all this value can calculate k so this is the equation for moving coil galvanometer that is n into i into a into b is equals to k into theta where k is the spring constant torsional spring constant and the theta is the angle at equilibrium are you getting or not now let us discuss this problem so this problem says in a moving coil galvanometer torque on the coil can be expressed into torque into k into i where is i is through the buyer k is a constant and the rectangular coil of the galvanometer having number of turns n and moment of inertia i find the k so we have to find and this is placed in the magnetic field we find the k in terms of n i a b are you getting or not so we have to find what is the value of k so you see t is given as k into i and t is writing torque so torque is given as k into i so now we have to simply equate so torque is given as k into i and you see we have already said torque on loop is given as mu cross b that is n i a b so torque is nothing but n a b into i so this means this implies i should have k is equals to n a b so this constant is n a b so this is your first part of the question so this is easy now let us discuss the next part so next part says if the rotation the torsional constant of the spring the torsional constant of the spring so we have to find torsional constant of the spring if the current i naught produces a deflection p by 2 this is not p by 2 this is pi by 2 so this is deflection is pi by 2 so this is pi 
So it produces a deflection of pi by 2 in the coil reaching the equilibrium position. So now I know the theta. So theta is pi by 2. Are you getting or not? So what is happening? Theta is pi by 2. And the, when the current is I naught. So when I is equals to I naught. Theta is pi by 2. Are you getting or not? You see what this question says. So let us read again. So torsional constant. We have to find K. Torsional constant. If the current I naught produces deflection pi by 2. So I know. If I give current I naught through these wires, these bindings, if I give current I naught, this pointer deflects by 90 degrees. So this means this pointer is here. And after giving current I naught, this deflects by A current. So this is a basically calibration of this galvanometer. So if I know the current, I can calculate what is the constant K. So that is a calibration. Initially, we have to make calibration. Any instrument, if I know, I can calibrate. So now I know. So this equation. I have N, I have A, I have B and I is this time I naught. So let us play this value I naught and this becomes K into theta and theta this time is pi by 2. So from here I can calculate K. So what is K? K is nothing but 2 and AB I naught divided by pi. So this is your K, torsional constant. Now I can use this torsional constant to measure the current because this is the first is calibration. So this is what by what we are doing. We are calibrating the torsional constant. So this is a calibration. So this is nothing but calibration. Now let us say what we have to find in the next part. This also says find the maximum angle through which the coil will deflect if a charge Q. So this is if. So this if, if charge Q is passed through the coil almost instantaneously. So we have to find what will be the maximum angle through which it can deflect. So maximum angle of deflection. So we have to find maximum angle of deflection. So that is theta max. So let us discuss how we will find. So I have a coil and through this coil and there is a charge that is passing. So through this coil the charge Q is passed, capital Q and this is for very small time. So now very small time this charge has passed then there is a torque. So there is a current. So if Q is there then there is a current and if there is a current there is a torque. Now if there is a torque, this means this loop will gain an angular velocity omega. So this means I have to have angular velocity omega. So if somehow I can calculate omega, things are easy because finally if I know the initial omega, so it will have a kinetic energy half phi omega square and this will be finally converted into total potential energy of a spring. So let us try to see what will happen. You will have something like this. So initially this coil will gain a angular velocity omega and this will try to move in this direction it will try to move so if this moves a spring becomes compressed so this will move up till the point when the spring has gained this total kinetic energy as a form of potential energy so at the point of maximum deflection I will have this the initial potential energy initial kinetic energy and this will has to be converted into final potential energy that is half k theta square that is theta max solar square now only thing is we have to find omega so how can calculate be omega now we know there is a torque so there is a equation dl by dt is equals to torque external so if i apply this torque external we can calculate so dl by dt as equals to torque external and torque external is n into i into a into b so this means i can calculate dl so dl is nothing but n a b i e into dt now if i integrate both sides so this becomes change in delta l change in angular momentum is equals to n a b and i into dt is nothing but q that is total charge flown through the circuit and delta L is nothing but I into a change in angular momentum is equals to change in I omega because initial so this is I into final omega 
minus i into initial omega is 0 so this is an a b q so this means I will have omega is equals to an a b q this divided by i so now if we equate this equation half i omega is square is equals to half k theta max square so half i omega square and omega is this and a b theta b q divided by i i is the moment of inertia so this i is moment of inertia are you getting or not so half i omega square is equals to half k and k value i have already calculated in the part one so you see k is what 2 n a b i naught by pi 2 n a b so you have here 2 n a b i naught this divided by pi so this is your k are you getting or not so you check here 2 n a b i naught divided by pi so this is half k and theta max whole square so from here I can calculate theta max so this to this to goes and here you will have so i i also goes so you can calculate from here so this i you can calculate yourself so theta max so I can write so this will be so this side I will have this i this i goes so I will have only one i and this is n a b q n a b so this is one n a b will go so we will have only one n a b are you getting or not so we will have only one n a b and this is q so you will have q a square and if you take the root of q so this will come outside so you will have n a b and then divided by i so this i i goes so we will have a i inside so this is the moment of inertia i and this i naught will also come this side so this i naught will come this side in the denominator so we will have i into i naught and this 2 whatever this 2 so this 2 will go in the denominator so we will have 2 here what about pi so this pi will go into the numerator so this is your maximum theta q into n a b pi 2 i i naught so you can check the answer again so you have the same thing here n a b pi divided by 2 i i naught so this is 1 is i i naught so this is so this is written as simply 2 into i into i naught no confusion and a b pi so you see and a b pi divided by 2 i i naught into q so this is the maximum deflection you will have